feeling it. I know you're feeling it today. Welcome to the show. Welcome back, yeah? Now, see, we're going to start off a little different because I figured it's important that when we do something, we celebrate something. So last week, we were talking about change, yeah? So welcome back. So now, what I want to do, take a minute out. Take a minute out, listen. Let the vibe catch you, right? And here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about those times where you work hard for something. Think about even the last four or five weeks where you had to make these changes, yeah? Think about it. Put a little bounce in it, right? Turn the music up. Come on, don't play. Think about something that you can celebrate, yeah? Catching up with an old friend. Achieving something. Hugging your little guys, right? Waking up in the morning. Yep, let's think of something that's gonna move you today. Something that's gonna, gonna get you going today. Something that you can share with somebody. Come on, turn it up, turn it up. Come on, I know you feel it, I know you feel it. Think about it, yeah? Think about all the struggles that you've been through. Every struggle, even somebody, some struggles that somebody else has been through. Today we're going to go over some stuff we went over last week, or the last show. Yeah, we're going to do a little recap, okay, of empowering change. Then what I want to do, I want to take you down a little journey. The journey that, that I was taking on and what change looked like for me and still changing. So we're going to give you a little roadmap of my life. You're going to watch some videos. And then we're going to finish off with a cool little video. God bless his soul. It's probably going to kill me for this. This is my uncle. But it's talking about when you know or feel you can do something and you try, try, try over and over again. You may have seen this video posted on my page, but we're going to get a chance to enjoy this. So it's a little funny, yeah? Just enjoy this music a little bit. So we're back. We've been kind of tired from all that Bunsen. Yeah, so it, 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 it is important, yeah, that you take out, even if it's one minute of your day to celebrate something, yeah? So we're gonna make that a norm here. We're gonna, we're gonna make that a norm, is to try to celebrate. So taking that minute out, so when we start our show, we're gonna do some celebration. So let's go over and let's recap from our last show because this is part two of empowering empowering change see when we said we're going to empower change we talked about having that fear right change creates fear okay and we talked about when fear gets inside of you when fear gets inside of you you're going to have to you know uh let it go through you let it go past you over you and then it's just you standing so once you are standing what happens next right what happens next when you're looking to make those changes and what happens next is that you're gonna have to start structuring yourself, structuring uh, your your direction, structuring your career, structuring uh, your purpose. So what we talked about, the next thing you're gonna have to do is find out what is your why and what is your purpose. What is that why, what is that purpose? So we talked a little bit about that. Once you figure out that why, we talked about the why, once you figure out the why, the why is the emotional stakeholder. And your purpose is what you want to achieve, okay? You have to create some structure around it and some purpose. So the PVISN is my purpose, my vision, my ideas, my structure, my next steps. Then you're taking your vision, okay? How far you want to go? What does that look like for you? After that, you got your ideas. Creating all these ideas. We call it the balloons thrown up, up, uh, up in the air, but you've got to be able to take your time and catch one at a time. Don't try to catch them all, yeah? Some of us thought balloons got those Tyrannosaurus Rex arms and trying to get them. Too many, too many balloons in the air, okay? Too many balloons in the air, or don't just try to catch them all at one time. Then once you got your ideas, you're gonna structure it, then you're gonna go through some next steps, and this is where we talked about creating those timelines. You must have a next steps because it's action planning. What we've done is that we created this model last week. We talked about our strengths, our plus, okay? 
And our, our, so our plus is our strengths, okay? Our triangle is a symbol, is a Greek symbol for change and our opportunities for growth. So no matter what purpose, the direction you want to go through, you're going to list down, yeah? List them down, list them down, okay? Don't go negative, don't go plus and minuses. We don't do minuses when we're empowering, okay? Uh, then we switched and came over to this side is that we talked a little bit about, okay, what does change look like? Change comes, okay, with time. It doesn't happen overnight, change comes with time. So I showed you this line chart and this is what affects change is when you're making change and going through changes. What you're gonna find is that this line is for the people that want change or if you want change. This is unsure of change and this is not looking for change. So for instance, when you're going through that first set of change, your mindset has to shift and it's gotta shift. See, when I'm just start getting betrayal, right? With yourself or with somebody new coming in, you start to betray him, okay? Because you don't know. You don't know what's going on next. You don't know nothing about it. Uh, I don't know nothing about this new diet plan. I have no idea. After betrayal comes denial, okay? It's on surety. After that comes your identity crisis. Then once you get that identity crisis, you're trying to find out how do you fit in, okay? Then you're looking at, man, I'm brought into it. My body won't change. I'm brought into it. I'm ready to go. I start searching for solutions, okay? Um, how can I make it better? What does it look like? What sort of tools I can get because I believe in it? And now that's when change happens. Understand is that some will be slow wanting change. Some are still unsure of you being there. Uh, you may be still unsure of this diet. So what happens, your change takes a little longer. So if you're looking for it and you end up searching for solutions and have made change, I'm sure people may be just getting past denial, okay? And these are the ones that don't look for change at all, it's not bothered. So we know that everything comes at a time. Be comfortable being uncomfortable, okay? Being comfortable being uncomfortable, we're going through some, some tough times now and you are very uncomfortable. Be comfortable with it, but make some changes. So what I wanna do now is just take you through my change, my journey, what did it look like for me, yeah? So so let's go and let's kind of go through this journey, okay, of my change, what what was my change? Let's take this journey. First started playing football at the North Village Club in Guida, okay? This is me here, NVCC in Bermuda, and I had to work. I had to grind, I had to work. They was getting to 20 juggles, I was on five, yeah? But I wanna change, so every night I woke up, okay? Turned that light on outside and start juggling. I get to 20, they get to 50, and so I keep grinding, keep grinding. I uh, went through that, ended up having a personal trainer that worked with me, really got a, a grab of my actually game, like around 10, 10, 11. Uh, once that happened, I wanted more. Okay, myself and my cousin Sean Goda, we actually just wanted to entertain. More for us meant that we wanted to share our talents. We trained every day, we worked hard every day, and we just enjoyed the game. One of the biggest things is that we played this game for was to have one day sign an autograph for a young person in Bermuda. And the other thing was to entertain. We had come up with tricks and flicks and come down training, you know, work with the older guys. So we had that. We came up in an era what was so great for us because it was a great climate of football. Uh, you didn't have to tell somebody to work hard. You didn't have to tell them to do extras. That was a, a norm. Yeah, that was a norm. I wanted so much more, went through all these uh, tryouts for different, different teams, went over to England. Then I ended up in the US, uh, which was great because I wanted to come to the US, okay? I was so uh, looking to forecast what was next for my life than just football. I was only weighing 126 pounds, so coming away from, from England, uh, I'm like, you know what, let me try US. So I actually went to Baltimore, uh, the Baltimore base, back in 1989, 1990, and did really well. Uh, what happened there was that there's only allowed two green card players or two foreign players. So at that time, my, my green card or my status to work in the US was not gonna be available or run until December, January. So they actually sent me, the Baltimore Bears, uh, Gary Hindley sent me up to Harrisburg, professional indoor team. I'm like, indoor? He says, you gotta try it. You know, you have some skill, why don't you try it? And that's what happened from there. That's where it all started, back in 1990, 91. Um, 
But what a change come in, right? What a change come in. Let me tell you what I had to deal with. I had to deal with, I was coming from being very, very successful in Bermuda. So everybody was, okay, go to England and play. Go to, go to Europe, go somewhere to play. As soon as I made that decision to sign indoor, I noticed a shift. There's a shift of like, well, you know, that's not a game, that's not this. And it's very interesting because this is where your focus has to be in. You have to focus. And because my purpose was to get out of Bermuda, to, to, to be in a, a space that I could continue to enjoy, as everybody, some may know my life, I went through some, some serious struggles. So whatever was coming first, I'm taking it. Whatever was coming first, and I'm gonna make the best of it. And at the time, I got the opportunity to play indoor. Then I weighed this out. Wow, this is a winter league. I can go back and do stuff for young people in Bermuda summertime. So I went through that little struggle of understanding. Okay, and I started to want to please others. And I said, no, I have to stop. I have to stop. Uh, my season in Harrisburg started off slow. I actually uh, didn't make it the first year. Uh, and making it wasn't making a team, but I wasn't successful like outdoor. I wasn't like like blowing everything up. What I had was good skill. I worked hard, but I didn't understand the game. So what happened after a few months, fear came in. It took me over. The fear took me over. It grabbed a hold of me. And what it done, because I wasn't as successful as I wanted to be, I allowed fear to grab a hold of me and stop me. It actually stopped me. It stopped me from wanting to be a part. So I came up with an excuse. Well, this is indoor, so whatever I can play it, and fine. So I went back to Bermuda, then went to England again, and I was lost. Lost, didn't have no tools or how to overcome this fear. So a good friend of mine, Mark Polisic, um, he was playing for Harrisburg. We all started at Rookies, and also Bob Lilly. Now Mark, Listen, he said to me, listen, why don't you come and coach for me? Why don't you come and coach for me for college? So I said, okay, I'm going to try this coaching thing. Came back up to Harrisburg, coached. And then he says, you got to come try out. you got to stay with it. And he kept pushing me. At the time, I was wearing number 16 was my number. Then he says, you got to come. You have to continue this journey because I know that you want to play. Bob Levy says, come on, man. you got to try out for us. Now, the team was very successful in the first year. He was very successful. Uh, but like I said, here comes fear. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. I went to train, went to try out, and I said, but if I'm gonna do this, I have to change some pieces. I have to change some things because I have to overcome fear. And this is when I, I, I started a new purpose. And what I done, the first thing I said, okay, I was, I was wearing number 16. And I said, if I'm gonna wear number 16 or wear any number, it has to make sense to me. It really has to make sense. So what I done, I changed my number from 16 to number 40. Yeah, so I changed it to number 40. Now with that, where number 40 was my kids' birthdays, okay? The 19th, okay, and the 21st. So I added them up, I said, good. So I'm playing for family, right? So now I have this awesome purpose. Then I said, what do I want to do after this? What's the plan? So I set my whole structure up. So what I done, I created this process. Now this process I created was that every game I put on the floor, in front of my locker, and I said that I'm gonna create an objective, an outcome, so now it gave me time to reflect, okay? Everything that I did from that point changed, every game. Now these are the objectives and outcomes I had with my professional winning championships. So that changed me, because every half time I came off and I looked at my sheet of paper, I said, okay, I did meet my objectives, I gotta work harder. After the game, I reflected, so I create this whole structure. I reflected and I trained hard in training. I worked hard in training. If it was defending, if it was getting back, if it was shifting, if it was finding space, I worked hard in training and it didn't stop. I became the top player in Harrisburg, uh, scoring over 450 goals. Now I gotta shift the game. Here comes Baltimore Blast. I come shift. Now I'm coming down to a club, much more established club, bigger club, very good players. New shift, and this was at 32. New shift comes. Then I got an injury, ACL injury. I gotta figure this out. I hadn't won my first championship. I was a forward, used to be that franchise player in Harrisburg. I have to shift the game. But fear is not coming in this time. Right away, I set up my structure, 
what it's gonna do, what it's gonna take to win a championship. What does that winning gonna look like? And from doing all that, creating everything, here's what I ended up with. So here is the outcome of the success, okay? These are all my championship rings with actually um, Baltimore Blast. And it's interesting because I very really share this, very really share, share them, but I'm proud of them. So I just wanted to take you on this journey, right? On this journey of, of what change looked like for me. It wasn't easy. And it was even tougher than that. We could talk all day about the shifting, about this change, but I want you to be able to relate. I had to grind. It's not easy. And I know it. So I know that when you're going through those days when you're like, wow, you know, it's, it's tough. I want you to really believe that change can happen. I want you to understand that when you make changes, fear will come in, right? I want you to understand is that after change is made, and if you've done all the work to sustain it, if you've done all the work to understand what is your why, your purpose, if you've done all the work to structure, you will get your reward at the end. Something with you. I want to share. This is my awesome uncle in Bermuda. Yeah, every time I go back, you know, I hire services. He drives around, takes me everywhere I have to go. But I want to share this awesome little video of him, you know, doing whatever it takes to be successful. Not giving up. Yeah, not giving up. Now listen, it's okay to chuckle. Yeah, because I'm sure you're going to get a good laugh of it. But sometimes things don't work out for us. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, when we're making these changes, sometimes it doesn't work out and we just have to shift or find another way to get to that destination. Let's take a look at this video. After this, I'm gonna try, you want me to pitch it for you? No, uh, no, nah, no, nah, nah. goody, goody, goody. Jesus, Maxwell, get your uncle! Maxwell, get, get your uncle! Ah. <laughs> did it, because it did it. I know you are chuckling. I know you are laughing and you're saying, Bascom, that is wrong. Oh, no, it's not wrong. So here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna finish off, yeah, just how we started. Let's, 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 uh, if you see my Uncle Goody in Bermuda, yeah, just, just kind of, just, just tell him next time, yeah? Tell him next time. But as we started, we talked about, man, just taking some time off for yourself because you've got a lot of time now and get to celebrate. So let's end on a little happy vibe, right? Turn the music up. And I will see you in Bascom's Corner next week.